We warmly welcome you, dear brothers and sisters, for our first XJW monthly program broadcasting. Here are some of the highlights that you can look forward to. You will hear the exciting announcement that 91-year-old Percy Harding was disfellowshipped. This is an exciting story of a brother who found the truth and then completely saw it through all the bullshit. We will also expose our archive, how we hid from the opposition our acts of child abuse and pedophilia. You will also see a music video, Why Life as a Christian is the Best Life Ever, performed by none other than Black Sabbath, Go Ozzy. We hope that you will enjoy our monthly feature, discrediting those who think they sit at the right hand of God. Oh wait, they're quite capable of doing that themselves. Well, I guess there's not much really to say. Oh, but we do want to let our, you dear brothers and sisters know that Kim and I have gone through a tremendous amount of expense putting together our studio. Five cents for a piece of paper. We already had the Sharpie in our drawer. So that wasn't any expense at all. But we do have a expense that's incurred, and that's $5 for this curtain right here. Maybe if some of you brothers and sisters would love to donate, say like maybe $5, $10, 15 maybe we'll get a shower curtain that has nice flamingos on. And from time to time, we will change the backdrop of our studio. But until then, please enjoy the following broadcast. <laughs> wow, how do you come up with this stuff? <laughs> it's pretty easy. I just watched JW.org. Well, now it's JW, uh, it's TVJW.broadcasting. Guys, <laughs> you should have never done this because you don't know how much more material you gave Kim and I to mock. My goodness. Hello, everybody. Hello. I Welcome you, to our home. Hope you enjoyed that opening parody. <laughs> For those of you that have already seen uh, Stephen Lex, Stephen Lex opening video to the Yeah, <laughs> you'll see that I took his words and I just kind of changed a few of them and mocked them. That was quite uh, Oh, um, by the way, the um, the suit jacket I wore, Kim took some dust from the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> that was dust because it's been in the closet for so long. Oh, my. Wow. My, oh, my. Um, we have way too much fun. Yeah. It, for those that have um, been following our videos for quite some time, you will see that maybe what, two, three weeks ago, we did a video kind of introducing or letting everybody know that this TVJW.org was was coming down the pike. And there were some that made comments thinking that this was a total and absolute joke. Yeah, hey, that you know what? us apostates were just, you know, making this stuff up. And no joke. Yeah. This exists. Yeah, just Google JW Broadcasting. Yeah, and and here again, um, Kim and I think that there are going to be some in the um, Jehovah Witness community that are just going to, oh, what a blessing from Jehovah. They already are. Oh, I know. It's... Your mom is one of them. It's very, very disturbing how far Watchtower is willing to go to um, continue to grab the mind of the current Jehovah Witness and let them think and believe that this is all from Jehovah. Yeah, right. No, it's from your dollars. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much, Jehovah's Witnesses, for your, for your healthy contributions to our new line of bullshit. Yeah. And oh, by the way, be, be, before we get going, Kim and I do want to make a prediction. Now, we're not prophets, so if this prediction does not come true, don't crucify us, <laughs> please. But we think that the memorial season 2015, we strongly believe at this point that that will be um, piped in or broadcast directly into the kingdom halls. Because Company what, body. yeah, I mean, honestly thinking and looking at it from a business perspective, what better way to have contributions filter in than on this particular night, the Lord's evening meal, when each congregation 
will be able to view the talk directly from a governing body member. Wow. That I wonder what idiot they're going to get to do that one because I think obviously they should Anthony Morris Tony. can't do it. No, I think they should have Tony. You think? Well, yeah. there again. Or maybe Mark Sanderson since we haven't heard much from yeah. that guy and he's the youngest one. Yeah, but, but then again, it'll just give us more to use. Yeah. So we'll see, you know, what the upcoming um, but season again, will bring. Don't crucify us if we're wrong. <laughs> Shout out to everybody. Too many names to mention. We'd be here all day, but we love you all. And we know everybody's going through some problems. And, you know, we are thinking about you all and wish you, you know, the best and, you know, help in your difficulties. And uh, you must want to know what we're going to be covering today. Well, I kind of have an idea. Um, can we want to thank Duke. Yeah, oh yeah. Always thank Duke. Duke. Al was a great source of information. Yeah, thank you for sharing the website link with us. We're going to kind of keep that secret for now. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you know, Kim and I have done a video in the past showing where Watchtower has written in their magazines that the Jehovah's Witness is not affiliated with the Watchtown Bible Tract Society. and You do not represent the organization. You don't represent. See, and we all know that there are legal ramifications involved when you go from door to door. Um, let's say you're walking down someone's walkway and you trip over a pebble and you break an ankle or, or something goes wrong. You can't sue the Watchtower for these mishaps. So Watchtower has done a very good job in covering their backside to ensure that they don't get sued. Or so they think. They want you, Jehovah's Witnesses, to think this, that you don't represent the organization. But what Duke has found for us is he has found for us the um, it, bylaws. It is the sample form they sent out to all the congregation. It's in, the bylaws of... Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses, and they've got like blanks where you fill in your congregation. Right. So this is the form that you use to start your own congregation or to keep in your files. Right. And what we want Jehovah's Witnesses to really stop and realize is that this organization that calls itself Jehovah's Witnesses is a legal corporation. And it is set up like a and corporation. And it is set up. That's why you have your monthly, annual, corporate meetings. Okay? And since there are bylaws, and since these laws govern how a corporation operates, there are some things that Kim and I never knew as a Jehovah's Witness, that there are bylaws that we could have used to call for any elder that is on the board of trustees to vacate his seat. But the problem is, is that the minute you speak up in the Kingdom Hall, your ass is hauled in the back room, and because you have this built-in concept, be obedient to those taking the lead, which means the elders, nobody dares question it beyond that. Yeah. Well, in a congregation we used to be in, there was a ministerial servant. Um, when they read the monthly accounts. accounts, he noticed there was a discrepancy from the month before. He was keeping track, writing these down every month as they did account reports. And um, since my mom worked for him, she happened to have heard that uh, there seems to have been thousands of dollars missing. There seems to be a large amount of money missing. Yeah. yeah. So one Thursday night when they're doing the counts report, he happens to raise his hand and ask, yeah, the discrepancy before the previous month. What happened to that money? Yeah. And um, needless to say, within a short amount of time, he was removed as a ministerial servant. So even though that this was a business meeting and he was well within his rights as a corporate member to question where the funds went, he was silenced by being deleted as a ministerial servant. Now, just to add to that, at this time, I was serving as a ministerial servant, and there was another brother, Henry, a French brother, that um, had the accounts, 
and and also um, we also know of another story, but I'm not going to get into that because it might give away too many identities. But anyhow, um, this brother um, ended up moving back to France, and he asked Kim and I to take him to the airport. And on the way to the airport, he made this comment. He says, "Brother Brooks, he says if the brothers ask you to be the account servant." He said, pay particular attention. He says, because money is missing. Someone's taking the money and it's not being replaced. But I never had that privilege of being the account servant. Um, so I can't confirm one way or the other, but I can confirm that there was a ministerial servant that openly challenged missing money. And then I was told by this brother taking him to the airport that money is missing. Yeah. So there is, I'm assuming, a measure of corporate embezzlement that goes on within the kingdom halls. Yeah. Watchtower, you you should pay better pay better attention to the finances. Yeah. So what we're <coughs> going to do is we're not experts in corporate law. We're going to try to explain how congregations are set up and run in layman's terms, and hopefully we'll get this correct. You know, if anyone has any further details or yeah. can be more specific, you know, put it down in the comments in the to comments. share with everybody. Thank you. Um, but the way congregations are set up, they are individual corporations. Like our old congregation is the Teheras Congregation of Jehovah's Witness Corporation of New Mexico. Which means it's got a, a separate board of trustees. Yeah. There's three trustees, the president, the secretary, and the treasurer. Now, Mike's dad was an elder, and he was a trustee back when in our old congregation in Arizona. So we do know, you know, how a little bit about how these are set up. Set up. But what is interesting is, you know, we don't know what is done in other countries, but this is here in the United States. See, and that's how Menlo Park got into such a pickle, yeah. is because the three brothers who were the trustees Watchtower came in and was telling them what to do, and them as the trustees have the power over the congregation, right? Not Watchtower not Corporation. Not Watchtower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And that's why there's such a big problem in Menlo yeah. Park. And I know this may be a little bit difficult to understand for those of you who don't know exactly how congregations are set up. Like I said, it is set up as a corporation. Well, when Duke sent us these bylaws, sorry, I almost hit you in the face. Yeah, with that's that. okay. <laughs> I get used to getting slapped around by you. Oh, you make it uh, sound 30, like I abuse you all the time. 35 years, I've learned how to get toughened up. Or duck. <laughs> or duck. Well, I'm not so good at ducking anymore. <laughs> yeah, like I abuse him. Okay, so like I said, this is the form that they send out, you know, and of course at the top they say sample form to be shown to your attorney. So you actually have to have lawyers, you know, do these papers. Right. This paperwork. But what was interesting is some of the stuff that is stated in these bylaws, they don't read this to you, Jehovah's Witnesses. They as, do not explain right, this to as you. As rank and file, because they don't want the rank and file to realize or recognize how much power is actually in their hands over not the body of elders. But the body of elders, that's part of the trustees. The trustees. Exactly. Yeah. So like we mentioned, this is the bylaws of the Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses. And then you, they have blanks so you can fill in your name and your congregation and state. The members of blank Congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses in blank blank, a religious corporation incorporated under Article 10 of the Religious Corporation Law of the State of New York. They use New York because that's where they are. At a meeting duly called for the purpose of adopting bylaws for the corporation on the blank day of blank blank, adopted the following bylaws by an unanimous vote of a majority of all the members of the corporation. Now remember that, members of the corporation. The corporation. Your members. Right. The okay. rank and file. Yeah. Article 1, members. Now listen carefully, Jehovah's Witnesses. Persons eligible for corporation membership are only those who are fully dedicated to Almighty God, Jehovah, baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, are completely in harmony with the doctrines and organizational arrangements set forth by the ecclesiastical governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. Interesting. And report ministerial activity. That's field service. See, field service. 
to the blank congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses in blank blank. Herein, congregation. See, now, if you don't belong to the corporation, then why do you have to be dedicated to Almighty God, Jehovah, baptized as one of Jehovah's Witnesses in, uh, and are completely in harmony with the doctrines and organizational arrangements? Set forth you belong by, to the organization. To the ecclesiastical governing body of Jehovah's Witnesses. Okay. Anyone meeting these requirements who is at least 18 years of age shall be designated a member of the corporation. Let me repeat that, Jehovah's Witnesses. Any meeting these requirements who is at least 18 years of age shall be designated a member of the corporation. Persons not meeting these requirements shall not be nor be deemed to be members of this corporation. Any member who moves from or becomes inactive in the above named congregation or is no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses shall be automatically removed from membership in the corporation without the need of his resignation. So you're just automatically deleted as a member. Exactly. Okay, so then they go on to explain in Article 2 the meeting of members. Okay, how there's going to be a first annual meeting at the first regular service meeting of the congregation in September for the election of trustees. See, now, here's a point, Jehovah's Witnesses. If there is a brother on the board of trustees that you don't like, you can elect, you can make a, mo a motion to remove brother so-and-so. Oh, but wait a minute. You know you won't do that. Because you know the minute that you speak up and say something, your ass is hauled in the back room before two or three elders and you're gonna and then then you're gonna remember, oh I gotta be obedient to those taking the lead. Exactly. See? Exactly. That's why nothing will ever change with Jehovah's Witnesses until you learn to change your own mindset. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay, and then at subsequent service meetings to be designated by the trustees. These trustees shall cause notice of the time and place of the annual meeting to be given to the members by an announcement made by the presiding overseer of the congregation at two consecutive regular congregation service meetings. Okay, so now, being a Jehovah's Witness for 42 years of my life, not one time in 42 years... Have I ever heard the announcement, brothers and sisters, we're going to have our annual corporate meeting in two weeks. A week goes by. Brothers and sisters, remember, we have our annual corporate meeting next week. Don't ever remember hearing Never that. have I ever heard that. So they are by-stepping their own bylaws and making this. See, the reason they don't want to do that is because they don't want to alert the rank and file that, hey, we have a business meeting coming. Maybe now's the time we ought to ask for some changes. Yeah. They won't do that. So they do go on to explain some more about details and stuff. And then it says, all meetings of the members shall be held at the Kingdom Hall. Okay, a special meeting of the members may be called, number one, at any regular meeting of the congregation by a majority vote of the members present. You have power. Okay, number two, at any time by the president or the board of trustees. Or number three, at the written request of at least 10 qualified members. So like if 10 of you get together and do a written re that's right. request, it but, is within your but rights. You know that's not going to happen because what's going to happen, the minute you send a letter to any member of the board of trustees, they're going to say, hmm, we have dissensions among our rank and file. How can we... How can we stop this? I know. We're going to haul Brother So-and-so in the back room, and we're going to say, now look, brother, if you don't stop this right now, we're going to disfellowship you for causing dissensions among your brothers and sisters, and then we're going to haul the other ones in here. We're going to disfellowship them for coercion. Jehovah's Witnesses, you can't win. See, even though these laws, these bylaws are in place, to show that these kingdom halls are mini corporations, you still do not have a voice in these mini corporations because these men are masters at stopping such rebellion. Well, look at even if the board of trustees has a problem, 
Watchtower comes in and kicks them all out. That's and right. The circuit overseer. Menlo Park all over again. Yeah, Menlo Park all over. <laughs> Menlo Park all over yeah. again. Okay, a majority of the members of the corporation shall constitute a quorum for the transaction of all business. Each member present at a meeting of members shall be entitled to one vote. Once a quorum has been declared, the vote of a majority of the members present shall constitute the act of the members. So, so how how can each member of the congregation have be entitled to one vote when you're not allowed to know internally what the issues at hand are? Yeah. See, Jehovah's Witnesses, you still can't win because See, you won't know what the issues are because the minute somebody tries to bring up an issue, you're hauled in the back room and your mouth is made to be shut. See, and the thing is, is that's what these resolutions are that we all voted on throughout the years, is they actually have to have a written resolution, and this is part of the corporation bylaws. So when you raise your hand and vote, that is your vote in the corporation. You know, but how many witnesses know that that is a legal... Well, here's... Well, <laughs> I go right back to that one vote in Wisconsin, brother, get up there and say, we have an opportunity to buy a lawn tractor. All in favor? Aye. So like, you know, stupid JWs, we put our hand up, and the minute the vote passed, he goes, Whew, I'm glad you all agreed because we already bought the tractor. Yeah. That's embezzlement. But how many of us brothers and sisters stood up? How many members I of did. the corporation? I did. There were only two. I did, and so did another brother. And I actually brought a Watchtower article from a few years prior that gave an illustration of a ministerial servant who was the accountant servant. He was taking some of the money with the good intention of paying it back, but it never happened. But the article pointed that any member of the congregation that uses any money from the congregation without prior, prior permission amounts to stealing. You know, those two elders I haul in the back room, neither one of them wanted to look at that article. You cannot affect change with these people. Yeah. Okay. Voting for the office of trustee shall be by any method deemed reliable by the person person presiding over the meeting, meaning the president so, presiding overseer. Yeah. So if you have an elder that's been the presiding overseer or Kobe for like 15 years, like we saw in Wisconsin, nobody would stand up to him. Why? Because he's already been the ruling voice for 15 years. So let's not rock the boat. But by the way, as long as idiot elder stupid will be the presiding overseer or the Kobe, that means I have to do less work. Yeah. So there's also a lot of, <laughs> you know, brothers, elders that, that see what's going on, but they don't have the guts to step up and make a change for the positive. Okay, back to the forum. If the reliability of the method of voting is challenged by any member present at the meeting, then the voting shall be by ballot. But how many times do we see that happen? How many times have you cast a ballot in a kingdom hall? How many have stood in the back to see how many are actually voting? Yes, they're just taking everybody's word for it. The trustee shall be elected by a majority of the votes cast at the annual meeting of members. So you have a say in who gets you know, to be the trustee. Okay, now, Article 3, trustees. The corporation's powers shall be exercised and the corporation's business shall be directed, conducted, and controlled by the trustees. The number of trustees shall be three. Each trustee shall be a member of the corporation. If a trustee ceases to be a member of the corporation, then he shall automatically cease to be a trustee. The expiration of the terms of office of a trustee, each successor trustee shall hold office for a term of three years. Any trustee may be elected for more than one term. Big Politics. surprise. The trustee shall have the power to conduct, manage, direct, and control the affairs of the corporation, to call special meetings of the board of trustees if the demands of the corporation make it necessary to negotiate and enter into contracts and do all acts and things necessary or expedient in carrying out the purposes of the corporation. <sighs> in exercising any of the powers herein, herein conferred upon them, the trustees shall act in complete harmony and unity with the body of elders of the congregation and the direction of the corporation's members. I know this is a bunch of legalese, but... Jehovah's Witnesses, you do have a say. You yeah. do have power. You know. <sighs> but you have to be willing to step up 
and take the proverbial beating. Oh, wait a minute. I've yet to see too many Jehovah's Witnesses that are willing to do that because you did. <laughs> when you do, you'll get disfellowshipped. Yeah. The body of elders of the congregation is hereby designated as a nominating committee to submit to the members at the annual meeting the names of nominees for the position of trustee. Yeah. Okay. Now, I thought this was interesting. Under Article 4, meetings of trustees, any action required or permitted to be taken by the trustees may be taken without a meeting. If all trustees sign a consent in writing setting forth the action, so taken and file the same with the secretary of the corporation. So, no. And then there's just some. Signed and notarized by one more, you know, secretary. and then miscellaneous. See, and the thing is, is when we did our video on the property scam in Cottonwood, we learned that when they do these bylaws and when they choose their trustees, it has to be notarized and filed with the um, county clerk's office in their state. Because that's how we found out um, the legal, you know, thing with the property. And then also seeing that we actually have the paper where his dad was made a trustee. So, you know, this is all public record, you know, of yep. who the trustees are. Um, whenever there's a property transfer, like we learned, you know, there in Arizona, these trustees have to sign it, you know, when it's signed over, you know, and to the title company and even then again they, to the... Even uh, if they buy it and sign it over to themselves. Yeah. Or if they transfer it to another congregation, it still has to go through the county clerk's office, um, the uh, property... Uh, you know, for once, I'd love to see a congregation of Jehovah's Witnesses put their hands up and say, no, we're not going to buy that piece of property. We're happy with the kingdom hall we have now. But it ain't going to happen because the rank and file is so programmed to say, yes, dear elders, whatever you want, you're going to get. Yeah. So I know there was a lot of legalese and stuff, but we thought this was interesting how Jehovah's Witnesses... These you bylaws, are, you, you have are members power. of the, corpor the corporation. You do represent the corporation. And <laughs> none of this is explained to you. Nope. But legally, you are a member of this corporation, the congregation you are in. So if you get hurt going from door to door while performing corporation like duties, you are entitled to sue Watchtower for due compensation, whether it's loss of wages. Whether it's a loss of an automobile, if you, oh, but wait a minute, you won't do that because the scriptures say, do not be taking your brothers to court. You know, it really sucks to be a Jehovah's Witness. Yeah. The thing is, is like it mentioned here in the members, is that to be a member of this corporation, you have to be doing your ministerial activity and reporting it to the congregation. Okay, so if you do not represent the organization, then why are you required to do this and report yeah. it to the congregation, yeah. the corporation you're in? See, it's just this twisted pretzel of reasoning. Yeah. So, Jehovah's Witnesses, do your research and please wake up. Bye. <laughs> Bye, everybody.